In this demo, we're going to walk through the administrator's experience, specifically the API administrator's experience, and look at the capabilities that they get um, over and above the anonymous experience that we've already covered. If you haven't seen the anonymous demo, I recommend you do that because it certainly will help to introduce a few concepts and, uh, and give you some, some more information about the way the enterprise API platform works. For now, though, we're going to log in as an administrator. So here we go. I could choose to log in using Facebook or Google or in an enterprise environment you'd likely have your enterprise site mind or Active Directory as login options down here. But I'm going to log in using a local account I've created. My API administrator is Susan, the administrator. So logging into her account. The first thing we see as a logged in user that's different from the anonymous experience is the dashboard. We talked a little bit about the dashboard. Basically, it's an aggregation of all the board items from all the resources that I'm following. And following is a very important concept in the product that we'll, we'll definitely cover in, in a little bit more detail. Now, my dashboard contains all of these resources, all of the, the board items. One of the things that's interesting here is we start seeing all of the requests for APIs that I administer. Because I'm the administrator of these APIs, I'm now engaged in the workflow. So we can see request objects. There's a request here. Um, in fact, let's look at this one. It's a little bit more interesting because um, I see a request from uh, Broderick's app to my customer's API that was activated and then canceled because we deleted that application. We can also see an approved request for Sandbox, and I can choose to suspend or cancel that API's access directly through the board here. So my dashboard gives me um, a, a very interesting live view of what's happening in the resources. And I can choose to filter that and just look at discussion objects in the dashboard. So we see the discussions that we, we saw earlier in the context of various different APIs. And as the administrator, I can now respond and engage um, with, uh, with my customers around these API concepts. What I want to do is drill into the My Money API, and I can link to it directly from the dashboard, or I could search for it, find it that way, so all APIs. But what's interesting now is that as a logged in user, I have this concept of My APIs. And My APIs lists uh, two separate blocks. First of all, at the top here, I have the list of APIs that I am an administrator of. I can choose to hide that and just look at the APIs that I'm following. In this case, I'm following a number of my own APIs because I want their information on my dashboard. And that's basically what following does. But I could also choose to follow somebody else's API, like Twitter in this case I'm following. Um, coming back to the list of my APIs, I'm interested in the My Money API, which we were working with a little bit earlier. So let's go and have a look. If you remember what you saw in the administrator, in the anonymous view, we had details, we had the board, we had documents and legal, and that was about it. As an administrator, I see a bit more. Uh, as we already saw, I have the administrative view of my own dashboard, and I have the same thing, the administrative view of the board of my uh, APIs. So I have all the request objects, I have the ability to post alerts, respond to trouble tickets if there were any in the system. And we'll get into a lot more detail around uh, some of these concepts in, in further uh, demos. I also have monitoring. Monitoring is pretty powerful. I get a, a basic dashboard that shows me that currently there's seven, trend, or seven to eight transactions a second flowing through the system. Latency is pretty, pretty low. They're running around three milliseconds of latency on these backend APIs, so it's pretty quick. And every now and then we'll see an error crop up here. And uh, we're, we're going to drill in and find out a little bit more about that. I also show some historic reporting, so what apps are using my API seem to be the set of apps are using it relatively evenly, and which methods of the API, which operations are being invoked. I can also see overall in, in my scope, my visibility, which APIs are, are the most used, and it seems like these four APIs are being used fairly evenly. I can also drill into charts looking at the sandbox environment, which is where all my traffic is. You can see in the last day, there's a little bit of traffic, so let's change my viewing here. I'm going to look at the last 15 minutes. And we see, it looks like I started some load back here and then ran a little bit more through the system, starting around here. So um, I can look at uh, this, this particular bar and see that we've had 124 requests, of which 112 succeeded and 10 failed. That looks like about 10% failing there. So the red dot shows me the failures. I can zoom in to a specific period right here. I can also choose to zoom out into a macro view and look and see what's happened in this API in the last year. Well, it looks like I took the API live some point in September. It looks like September 16th. 
And since then, I've had some very spotty traffic, which is pretty much what you'd expect from a demo API that occasionally throws some load through. Here on November the 11th, it looks like I threw just over 100,000 requests through it. And again, about 10% seem to be failing. Hmm, very suspicious. Let's drill into the logs and see if we can find out what's happening with these failures here. Again, I need to look at the sandbox endpoint because that's where all my traffic is. It's in test. And I see a view of, of the traffic that's flowing through the system. And as I scroll, it'll just continue to refresh. It'll keep loading more records as available. I can also search through these records um, and filter in different ways. In this case, though, I'm looking for a fault. Oh, here's one. Looks like the read operation failed. Let's drill into that specific operation here. Not the prettiest UI at this point, but these are things that we're polishing up nicely as we go through. Let's look down at the response. Oh, look, intentional failure based on a fail percent setting. Failure percent is set to 10. Of course, the code that I write never fails, so I had to write a failure in, um, in this case, to make sure we get some nice pretty red dots on the charts to make the demo look a bit better. Let's go back to our usage data, and that's essentially the monitoring capability. I get the same view of the documents as an administrator with a couple of wrinkles. As the administrator, I'm able to edit the docs and, and change the annotations in the live dynamically generated doc. We'll come back to that. That's going to be a subject for another conversation as we go forward. I can also use our file manager to upload and manage docs, but as I say, another topic for conversation. In legal agreements, same concept. I can see the agreements. I can also manage them, upload new files, do all sorts of things that are important in the context of, um, of managing my API. I also get to control the administrators of the API. In this case, there's just me, but I could invite other people to come and participate in the administration of the API with me. And I also can look at the list of apps that are consuming the API, and I see their workflow status. So in this case, I have a whole bunch of apps, this, this load uh, generation environment, active in the sandbox. I have a couple of apps, one that's active in production, another that has its access pending in the production environment. Um, and I, I also have an app that has, has had its access revoked and has resubmitted its request, and I can choose to approve or request that. I could also find the request object in the board of the API, and I can choose to, to in, interact with the user in this context and, and work back in this, in this manner. So a pretty, uh, a pretty powerful uh, set of constructs in, in the, the, the realm of this, uh, this API. So coming back to the API, I can also edit it. A few different things I can do editing. I don't want to get deep into the API definition construct because that's going to be a topic for another session. But things that I can do, um, I can choose to update the icon. I can update description information, change version information. I can actually version the API through a different interface. And I can also change the status of the visibility of the API from, from public to private or more realistically private to public. Pretty common approach is to start with APIs in a beta world in private and have a limited group of testers able to use them and then switch them to public as we go. I'm not going to proceed through this because, as I say, topic for another conversation going forward. Um, one other thing I did want to highlight here was uh, in a private API, so let's go find one, my people API is marked as private here, I get one additional administration item, which is the groups. So in groups, basically, I'm creating different groups or inviting existing groups of people who I want to work with in the context of this API. So the API won't be visible, it won't be published in the search index unless um, you happen to be in a group that is given access to it. In this case, there's one group, the people API users, and this group has one member, just me. Um, in fact, me in a different context. I'm certainly not Susan right now, but uh, one of my users has the ability and the right to see this uh, this API, and that's that's about it. That's all. All the only people that have visibility are me as the administrator and this one user. So privacy, API privacy, is very powerful, uh, very strong concept within the within the realm of the product. So very quick recap. My APIs gives me the list of APIs that I'm administering, and for any of these APIs, I get a great deal of detail about the API, including all the monitoring information, the ability to control and manage the apps that are able to see the API and to participate in that workflow, um, and of course to edit and change the API and security details version, it, all of those kind of things. So with that, we're going to move on and we'll, we'll have another series of demos covering specific functional capability.